Booyah, we're live in the air. Hi, this is Roxanne. Welcome everyone to Hukalo TV, and we are, let's say, presenting story time in this Hangout, this idea event. It takes place every Saturday at the same time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, and adjust your clocks accordingly around the world. And what we'd like to do is uh, offer a platform for people to come in and tell their individual stories, a story about whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter. We love the art of storytelling because storytelling for me and uh, let's say a lot of other people is a way to communicate their feelings, a way to get across a picture, a way to join us together. It's really beautiful. So uh, this is our third presentation of story time. And today we have a room full of people. We have Alexandria, we have Brian, we have Carolina. Is it Carolina or Carolina? Help me out, Don. Carolina. Carolina, thank you. Guru Dan, Johannes, JD, we call him. John from Down Under. Marla, hi, Darlin. Darlin. Shinny, which is Sean from Ireland, don't you know? Uh, that, God, that was Minnesota accent. Okay, Roxy, nice try. We have Roxy Yates, that's Yarn59, is her. Um, Thing. Thanks for joining in, Roxy. And then, of course, I'm here as well. So I am going to turn it over to the idea of, uh, oh, hang on. Yeah? Okay. The idea of uh, Carolina first. She is going to present a story. And the story doesn't have to run. There's going to be several stories today. Um, you know, they just want to tell one idea or two ideas. It doesn't matter. We just want to get it out there, and this is the platform. So thank you all for tuning into this idea, and enjoy the human perspective of storytelling. So you're up, darling. Take it away. Thank you, Roxy. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Carolina. Um, I just wanted to share um, a little um, something that uh, recently has happened to me. Um, and uh, but I, I guess at uh, first I'll, I'll give you a tiny little background about, about myself. I, I'm Colombian, um, and I came to live in England when I was 13, so hence the English. Um, and I said I have I'm a single mom. I have a six-year-old boy. Um, that's it. But just uh, I'm in between studying and finding a job. I just graduated yesterday. Yay! <laughs> Um, so anyway, about this story. Um, not long ago, um, there was a mass that was found. No, actually, let's go a little bit uh, further back. About a year ago, I had a um, head injury, and then after that, I was left with uh, suffering from lots of headaches and um, lack of sleep. And so they they kept um, uh, the the doctors kept an eye on, on my head. Basically, they, they they asked me to go back every so often to to get my head checked because of that, and uh, because the the headaches never stopped. So um, anyway, in one of the the scans about about a month ago, they found a mass in my brain. And uh, the neurologist thought it, it wasn't confirmed yet, but he thought that, according to the evidence, it, it looks like it was a brain tumor. So they, I, I was, I was sent to hospital so I could get more uh, head scans done. And yeah, yeah, MRIs, and there are different types of MRI scans. Um, that can be done. So uh, two of them showed a, a, a mass in my head, not too big. It's, it's only tiny around my pituitary gland. Um, and so, but yet at the time, it, nothing was ever confirmed. It, it just thought it's just a mass, but it looks like this. Um, at that time, my world was kind of. I don't know, destroyed, <laughs> if you could say that. Um, it's mainly because I'm the sole carer for my son. I wasn't even thinking about myself. I was thinking about my son. Um, I, you know, I'm just starting my life. I've been through 
through so much now you know for me this is the time that I was like beginning again and so it, for me it's just a bad timing but I guess after the days I thought um you know accept it and you, that happened right round about the time I joined Hikolo. Um so it kind of links with I don't know why I was attracted to Hukolo, but then I'm starting to to understand why because looking at the videos and hearing um you know advice and everything that helped me go through the news that I received back then um it helped me think that I choose my own reality now I know that I, I didn't know that before I, before I, I don't know maybe I could have been depressed maybe because of it um, so when I received the news I thought you know what it's not the tumor's life it's my life that's it you know I choose my reality um, this is what Hukula helped me do, it gave me the strength and thank you everybody because I feel, although I don't know many of you personally, I feel really connected with this community, um, so thank you for that. Um, anyway, um, this was about a month ago, I decided that I've been having that mentality, this is my life, not the brain's life. I carried on my life as normal, happy, I'm, I'm looking for a job, I just graduated um, and then I had a head scan a week ago and it just happens that they didn't find it out of, out of the blue, that there was no tumour, there's no mass, they can't explain it, they're completely baffled by that. So. Uh, I was confused, but deep inside, I kind of knew, you know, that I, I just knew. I don't know. I, I can't explain it. I just knew. So, you know, feel free to ask. Um, so anyway, they they're going to they're going to send me so I can do more tests and stuff. Um, but um, they can't explain it because this last head scan was a, a, a specific one um, to so they can look at the pituitary gland specifically and they couldn't they just couldn't find anything they can't they don't know they can't explain why so I thought I, I, I thought I, I wanted to share that with you because it is true what they say you choose your own reality you know you choose it's your life, you control your life. Nothing else controls your life, it's your life. You know? And thank you, Roxy, for that because I've you know, I've heard your webinars as well and it's given me lots of strength. So thank you guys. That is absolutely outstanding. Because mm -hmm. I remember a couple of weeks ago you told the group about it and then we all did this massive prayer and we wanted to do a meditation and now you're telling us there's nothing there. <laughs> Thank you. That's amazing. I know. I love it. I'm I'm over the moon, and you know and I you love it. it. And thank you for sending me all the all the good vibes and positive energy because I felt it. I felt it, and there, there was one night where I was asleep and I felt something in my brain, kind of. And as I was waking up, I felt two. How would you say presence? Mm. Two, two entities. I, d I don't know what they were. Um, I just felt two people next to me. And then the next day, I received the news that they didn't find anything. So, so thank you, thank you, guys. I think everything, everything that people have sent me, positive thoughts, positive energy, this, the community strength, it's helped me a lot. So thank you for that. That is freaking awesome. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Thank baby. You. 
That was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. It totally touched my heart. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks. I mean, look at you. you got a whole new, fresh life. You got a fresh start. You just yeah. graduated, by the way. Congratulations! Congratulations! Thank you. Ready to get a job out there. Got your son ready to go, and then poof, you get hit with I yeah. got a brain tumor, and then you had the choice, yeah. Yeah. and you chose yourself. You said, "No, I'm done. I'm moving on. Yeah. I'm gonna be me." That's right. Yeah, I, I just thought if, if if anything, I'll just look at it as an experience. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's not, that, that tumor is not my life. I am my life. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Thanks thank a lot. <laughs> so that's it from me. Maybe in the future I'll, uh, I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you more about myself, but I'll let somebody else start their story today. Yeah, and you're perfect now. All up to you, darling. Thank you so thank much, you. baby. Okay. Okay. So now, love you. Wants to love, come you all. love you, baby. <laughs> and uh, Brian, you want to go up now? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, and Carolina, can you mute yourself for us in case there's any like noise or anything? Thank you, baby. Yes, right. Brian, you're up, baby. All right. So the story I would like to share with you guys and to the listening audience is my story about when I really started to awaken to the spiritual side um, and the extraterrestrial side. I thought this was fascinating um, to me at the time. Uh, let me take you back to the year 2004, 2003-2004. Um, I moved into an apartment and um, I was on my way to work, or no, I was coming home from work because I worked third shift at the time, and my hours, I think it was around, let's see here, I went in at 10, 10.30 at night, got off around 6, 6.30, about 6.30, and when I went in, or when I got home one day, I, I saw something up in the sky, and the moon looked different, it was still night time starting the sun was just starting to come up a little bit um, it wasn't all the way up yet it's just starting to you know um, come up but I was driving on my way back maybe a couple miles away from the apartment and I looked up in the sky and I started seeing this this like silver disc and and I said to myself you know that doesn't look like a star and the sun, you know, the sun's starting to come up, and usually you start, you don't start to see the stars anymore. You know, especially when the sun's all the way up, you just don't see the stars. So, like the bright morning star, where there's um, Venus, I think it is, uh, usually see, I think, in the morning. Um, but, you know, that was, the sun was already up, or starting to come up. So I got home and to the apartment, and I'm looking up right before I walk in the apartment. It's still kind of you know, dark out, it's still kind of like a little bit of light, and I'm looking up, and I see this, like, silver disc, and it's way up there, and it's right above, I mean, straight above the apartment, and I'm thinking, okay, you know, at the time, I wasn't really into extraterrestrial stuff, and I wasn't really, that wasn't really on my mind, and I'm looking straight up at this thing, and I'm like, what is that? I go, it can't be a star because all the stars are they are pretty much, you know, the sun's coming up. You know, they're, they're, I can't see the stars anymore. And that thing's just stationary. And I didn't see any twinkle or anything like you usually see from the stars, the, you know, the twinkling. I didn't see any of that. And I'm thinking to myself, what is this? And I go inside. Okay, I think, okay, nothing of it. I go inside. And this thing's you know, pretty far up there. And at first I thought it might be like a satellite or something, you know. But usually those things go by because, you know, the earth, the rotation. But I'm thinking, no, no big, no big thing. So I go in and have breakfast. You know, I get off and I can't really, you know, work in third shift, but I'm still up. You know, it takes me a couple hours to wind down and fall asleep. So I go inside, have my breakfast, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm wondering if that thing's still out there. So uh, this is about 9 o'clock in the morning. The sun, you know, it's definitely up. So 
I go outside. I just said, all right, I'm going to go back outside and see if that thing's still there, whatever it is. I go back outside, and I look up, and it's still there. It hasn't moved. And this is like 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, it, you know, the sun's purely, and, you know, it's up. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> and I'm thinking it's like silver, but it's not too high up and it's not too low. You know, it's, and I'm thinking, I mean, it's a good, I'd say a good, maybe I'm trying to estimate it, maybe a mile, maybe or less than that, but it's straight up. Um, you know, it wasn't way, way, way up there, but it was, yeah, I'd say a good mile or so. And straight up and to this day I, I still don't know what it is and I mean well now I know <laughs> but at the time I really didn't and um, that that just opened up everything for me I started doing so much research I started having more vivid dreams about these different beings and being on ships um, it really started around 2003 yeah 2004 is where I really started um, my awakening, my it really wanted to know more about the extraterrestrial side of things. I've always been interested in angels and stuff. You know, even when I was younger, I always questioned everything. I um, I've always wondered, you know, what could that be? Um, you know, I was raised in church, always wanting to know more about how angels come and go, uh, what their material, what they're made of, um, their particles. Um, I've always been curious about that. But what fascinated me more was about you know these planets and even at the time it was early on about exopolitics and exoplanets um, you know the, the whole ideal of that about life out there in the universe I mean it became really exciting for me and I never gave up that search to know more I always questioned everything and I think that's what really kept me going to really know more so I got really depth into I first started uh, learning about the Billy Meyer story, uh, the Billy Meyer case contactee from Switzerland, and I was really fascinated by his his um, his contacts with um, with uh, the Palladians, and so that's what really probably motivated me was right after I saw that you know probably ship in the sky, um, that really sent me on my journey to to know more about uh, our space brothers and sisters. And um, so I did a lot of research into contactees. Um, I'd, I didn't really get too much into ghost, uh, like ghost hunters. I watched a couple of their shows, but I, I didn't really, I was kind of fascinated by it, you know, like the EVPs and um, electric, what is that EVP? Um, the electric voice phenomena, I think that's what's yes. called. Electric voice phenomenon. Yeah. yeah, and I was really fascinated by that a little bit. Like they can create these little radio things or these digital um, uh, instruments where they could pick up through electronics, like voice recordings. Like you would say something, then they would hit you. They would record it, and then when they played it back, it would it would magnetically somehow it would transfer the the sound or the voice into words and they could pick up on little bits and that was really fascinating to me and so around that same time I'd watch a little bit like I think it was around ghosts like after that got into a little bit of ghost hunters and then ancient aliens came on and I really got into that I thought that was so cool and so just that little just by that one incident that really got the ball rolling for me about 2004 and I was just blown away with all this information coming in and I said, this is really neat, you know. Um, and my first instinct wasn't to run out and share with everybody because I didn't want them to think that I was going off the deep end, you know, that was crazy. So I couldn't share it. I felt I couldn't share it with my mom, uh, my dad at the time, uh, even my brothers. I waited about three or four years later after I got a really good feel on what this stuff was, what it was all about. I had to wait. Because I knew if I started telling them, and I didn't really understand it, how are they supposed to really understand it, you know? So I had to, you know, I, I was, I waited until about 2006, 2007. Yeah, about 2000, 2007 is where I shared it with one of my brothers. 
and you know I told him the story what happened you know coming home from work and then I started researching some like really realistic pictures that even though most of the stuff's photoshopped today there are some really authentic photos on YouTube you know on Google that you can probably find of ships and stuff and um, so I, I did some research and I found some really interesting photos, interesting photos, and I started sharing that with my brother, and one of my brothers, and he was really interested. I mean, at the time he was like, he was starting to watch Ancient Aliens, so he was still, you know, 2007, 2008, he was kind of interested in, I think it was around 2008, 2009, what maybe it might have been around that. It's right when around the first season. I can't remember exactly when it came out, but he started getting interested in it. And all I did, I didn't say anything. I just showed him the pictures. I said, hey, Brad, I said, check this out. I go, what do you think of that? He looked at it. He looked at me. He looked at it. He looked at me <laughs> back and forth. And he was like, there's something there, but I don't know what he goes. It could be real. I don't know. I really don't know what it is. And, you know, when he told me that, I said, I know. I go, what if there's life out there in the universe? You know, what if there's more out there? We just need to really dig and find it. And uh, that led him on his path, and he started getting involved in it, but not as much as I did. Um, you know, he he did he went his own way with his stuff, but um, later on, I told my other brother. And so, about a year later, I shared it with my other brother, and uh, he was really interested in it, a little bit, and he was like, "This is really fascinating." He goes, "Have you told mom?" I said no, because if I tell mom, she's going to think I'm crazy. And I'm like, I said, I trust you guys. I just don't trust mom yet. I, I don't, I'm just afraid to share it with her. And, um, and they, you know, they understood and they, they were very respectful. And so we waited for a while. And then I think not until 2012, 2000, yeah, 2012. 2011, 2012, I started to share a little bit with my mother then. And she took a little bit in. She goes, I've always believed there's something out there, but I, I, you know, she was raised, raised Catholic. And she was like, I, I just don't know. I, you know, we can't, she goes, if family comes over for holidays and stuff, just don't talk about it, Brian. <laughs> you know, they're not just, they're not ready for stuff like that. I said, all right. So, but I was excited by 2011, 2012. I really wanted to share it with everybody, but I couldn't because I knew that if I did, I would have to bring it down to their level. But at the time, I didn't, I didn't see it like that. I just wanted to share it. It's almost like it was like, I wouldn't say preaching, but I really wanted them to know how I felt. I really wanted them to know, to see the passion within me that this stuff's real, guys. It really is. But in so doing that, you know, I, I went through a rough time. And so I had to pull back. I had to regroup. I had to understand that not everybody is ready for this at that time. You ha I, have to, I had to learn to step back and present it in a way that's very grounding, in a way that could just plant the seeds within people but not give it to them all at once. Because I knew if I gave it to them all at once, I learned the hard way that for now on, if I did that, it would be too overwhelming for most. So for the general public, I had to learn to present it in a way that they could grasp and appreciate. That was the biggest uh, key there, is to appreciate what's being shared and do it in a way that they could truly understand it and bring it down to their level and use science in a way to back it up, to bring a little bit of scientific science to it, to the, the physics, the stuff behind it that makes it all work. What we call magic, in a way, there is physics behind it. Um, it's spiritual physics, whatever you want to call it, but there is some type of mechanic, like a, what do you call, a um, universal mechanics behind it uh, That you, with energy. It's all dealing with energies and stuff. But it's a different type of energy that we don't usually perceive. It's um, we can use it in a way, but sometimes we don't. We see the usually the results of it, but sometimes the minutia of it 
behind the scenes, we, we sometimes most of us, we have a hard time grasping what it really is. So for me, that was very fascinating. And um, yeah, I just, I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, but now at least the good thing is my family, most of those in my family, only my sister is not open as, as my brothers or my mother now. But finally, my mom here just the past the past year, she opened up even more. And um, the only thing is, she just doesn't want to talk about it around her friends and other family members. But but at least she's more accepting uh, my passions and what what I believe. So I got to share that with them, and uh, you know I'm really appreciative of that. So um, yeah, that's that's my story. So thank you, Roxy. You're welcome. And I like what you said. Is like. You know, I guess it's it's a lot of times people are uh, that get experiences and sharing it because social acceptance is a huge thing for a lot of us. Yes, yes. You know, and family members is even deeply deeper of social acceptance than you know your friends or um, acquaintances, coworkers, whatever. Yes. And um, you had to walk a tight line. You know, oh, yes. for yourself, <laughs> you know, what you were comfortable with and having the guts to bring it forward. And, you know, it's, 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 UFOs have been around for a long time. Yeah. You know, and there's just so much out there on them. But right now, people are like, I don't know, it's bullshit. You know, <laughs> and it's not. Well, and I keep and thinking to myself, to you know, it. It, it, yeah, and I keep thinking the majority of us in life, it, it's that, um, that nine to five job or eight to four, you know, like it's like we're de- they're so we're in survival mode on just to survive and to pay yes. bills, and that we don't really have the the time. Sometimes we we think what's really to have the time to look outside and up into the sky and use our imaginations. We're so conditioned right. to see it from one side, one perspective, a linear right. fashion. So and also, like, yeah, also people don't want to deal with it too. Right. Because right. a lot of people in the idea, let's say maybe they define themselves as OCD and they like to have their things in order and very, very structured because yes. if it's too loose, they'll lose control. So if you add crap on their plate, they're like, oh, fuck no, get away from me. I can't <laughs> handle that. That's true. That's true. You know? Yeah. But there's more and more and it's happening. And what I love about it is you, now we have bigger and bigger communities all over the world that can yeah. share these ideas like the ancient alien idea people, there's groups that follow that. There's meetups around the world I that are saying, it. hey, guys, yeah. come over here and share and be with us because we understand what you're going through. I love it. Because what a beautiful now, ascension. Yeah, I love it, Roxy. <laughs> I love it because now more of this is becoming to, on mainstream. Yes, like, yes. The History Channel, ancient aliens. The History I mean, Channel, right? Yeah. Uh, the National Geographic is starting to start to show some promising stuff. I mean, it's yeah. it's at least a little bit, and a little bit goes a long way. So it's all a nice beautiful. shift. I love yeah, it. yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Roxy. Well, thank I'll you for sharing. I'll pass it to another. Thank you. Okay, he's passing the baton. Anyone want to go? <laughs> I'll go. Yes, you will. All right, let me myself. Hang on. Okay. Well, my name is Alexandra, and I'm from California. Originally, I was born in Argentina, Buenos Aires, and I came to the United States when I was seven years old. Um, my first stop was in uh, Texas, and uh, it was a huge difference between the big city in Buenos Aires to show up in a little country town, and at that time, the, the roads were dirt, and we were not used to this. So we had to adjust. In my first welcome family there, we had um, an aunt and uncle uh, from a mom's side, uh, but they were not the friendliest people on earth. But um, I, there was a right across the street from them, from the ranch that they had, uh, was a native family, and they were uh, American Indian, and they embraced me. You know, here's this little white girl with reddish hair and. You know, down to my knees and green eyes, and they thought I was an alien. And um, so they embraced me right away. And and I spoke English uh, out of my my siblings and my mom. I was the only one that spoke English because I learned it in school. But it was from the England 
type of English. So she said, uh, Mr. Demas said, you know, the first thing we need to do is teach you how to speak the Texas way. And I said, okay, sure. And so um, he s showed me, both him and his wife showed me their tradition, you know, what natives uh, did, you know. And, and um, so I learned the history of, of, of America through their eyes. And and I was very, uh, very, very spiritual by, by that time. Um, I was, I would say, I was awakened by by the time I was two years old. I came in full blown, telling everybody already who they were from a past life, and uh, it was very headstrong. And my mom was very confused to say the least because it was like, where do you come up with all this? And it was really hard at the beginning for me in spirituality because I was the only one who was able to see everything at once at the same time. And so there was a lot of things going on where I was to be able to see other people's realities and I would see their guides and I would see what people perceive, that, you know, it could be a ghost or another entity, whatever. I saw everything. There was nothing hidden for, from me. And so a lot of it, my mom thought maybe I was sick, maybe I needed, you know, medication, maybe I needed to be seen by a doctor because it was impossible that I would see so many things and I would tell them and forecast the future, tell people, you know, watch out because this is going to happen to you and um, do healings and I was just all over the place for being a little kid. So um, it was always like, Alex, don't. Alex, stop. Don't do this. Alex, be quiet. Don't tell anybody. This has to be between us. You cannot tell people, you know, you see these things. So it was always hush, hush, hush. Stop, stop, stop. And I had to learn how to un undo a lot of the things that nowadays people train to do. You know, they go into meditations and they want to awaken and they want to open the third eye. I had to do the opposite. Everything was awake and everything was open. Everything was accessible to me. And so it was the opposite effect because I didn't have anybody to kind of either mentor me or saying it's okay or, you know, you could apply it or maybe what you perceive is this, but it's a, it's a probability. I had none of that. I had no guidance whatsoever. So I had to basically count on my own guides, on my own spiritual family to to run to. But, but it also created an effect of a very unhappiness, of not belonging. Um, I felt as if I was from out of this world, that I just landed in the wrong place in the wrong time at the wrong year. Everything was just, there were no, there were, nobody was ready for me. So um, fast forward to now, um, all my life, like I said, I learned to shut that door uh, to be able to coexist with other people and be able to... Uh, before I used to touch somebody's hand and I could see their whole life story in front of me like if it was a movie projector. So I had to learn how to close the chakras in my hand. So when I shake somebody's hand, I didn't know everything about them because it took out the mystery of discovering to get to know someone when you knew everything about them all in one, in one shot. So I had to do all those things to adapt. and uh, But I never had the experience of the ET, extraterrestrial type of thing. I mean, I saw a lot of uh, masters, ascending masters, guides, and dead people, and, you know, I saw all those things, but I never really saw a full-blown alien. I never did. But I understood that part of me uh, was always out there somewhere, and I always felt like I didn't belong. That it was like a, gosh, I belong somewhere, but I didn't know what that somewhere was. And it, it, it became to a point where I was extremely depressed, um, I was quite suicidal at, at times. I thought, God, maybe if I'm just go back to where I belong. And then I kept thinking, well, where do I belong? Because I can remember before being in this reality, I was a man. And here I'm a girl, you know, and, and why did I do that? And so constantly questioning myself about what was I experiencing. I always wanted to learn, and I still do. I think I'll forever be a student because I always question everything and I want to learn more and expand more. And then with the same token, help others who are going through the same, perhaps, uh, you know, help them. So when I came to Hugelo, uh, the way it happened was I had done channeling. Uh, I channeled spirit guides and family members for other people um, privately. 
and I was with the partner at that time and my son and him and I decided to sit in our living room and we created a triangle without knowing it. Uh, we noticed before this happened uh, that we kept seeing triangles everywhere, constantly, in meditation, in visions, symbols, you name it, this pyramid kept showing up and neither one of us three knew why. Um, I never really was uh, inclined to research about Egypt or anything like that. I was not interested. It didn't appeal to me. So I didn't go back to look up anything. I just didn't want to. This just wasn't my thing. But this pyramid thing kept showing up constantly. So all of a sudden, um, we were in the living room, and I said, "Hey guys, why don't we meditate? You know, we haven't we haven't done it this week. Why don't we just sit there and, and see what what's up? You know, what happens?" Now my partner at that time, he was he was very devoted to spirituality. Like he really wanted to be where I was. And I always told him, and like I told most of my friends, don't try to be like somebody else. Just just go with whatever wherever you are at the present moment and, and embrace that awareness. And if you learn something better or something else comes up, embrace that too. But don't try to mimic yourself or compare yourself to somebody else because you might get disappointed and then might also, uh, oh God, let me close the door. The ice cream guy is here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we get the ice cream truck. Forget in it. It's <laughs> is it? <laughs> yes. I'm like, somebody's listening. There's music out there. I'm like, shut up. No, it's Music Box Dancer. That's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> Go with your story. We love it. So, anyways, um, my partner at that time would be very frustrated. Like, you know, like, Sometimes it would cause arguments between us. It was like, I hate you. I hate the fact that you could just sit there and bam, you're there. You do this and everything's easy for you. And and I kept saying, you know, you, you're you comparing two different, very two different things, you know. I mean, I know that it might look to you like it's fruit, you know, orange and apples, and it's all fruits all one thing. But you, your journey is ex exploring and getting to know something new. Mine is completely different. My journey is completely different. It's probably trying to control, maneuver, understand, and cope with things. You is learn new things. That's your thing. You know, so just let's, let's just take it easy, you know, relax. But he didn't quite understand that concept. So in this particular time, I thought, well, you know, he really wants to meditate and he wants to have a connection to something. You know, <laughs> like he wants that experience so bad, I could feel it. So I said, okay, let's, let's meditate. Let's see what happens. Well, little did we know, I did not know this at that time. When we created that triangle, we opened like this portal. And both him and my son are very extraterrestrial. And again, at that time, I did not know this. Um, and probably later on in another story time, I'll, I'll share my, my son's story. But for today, let's just let's stick to this. <laughs> and so anyways, we opened up this portal. And these all these aliens started showing up. Now, mind you, I have never seen it. Now, my, my partner at that time, he was familiar with aliens for whatever reason. He was interested in that stuff. And, um, and he kept saying, no, when I meditate, I see... I don't see what you guys see. You guys see, like, I don't know, Jesus and stuff like that and angels. I, I see ugly-looking aliens. And I thought, oh, gosh, that's strange. I've never seen one. Well, that day when we meditated, we all three of us saw the same one. And, you know, we asked who his name was. And then all of a sudden, the alien was inside me, and I channeled him. And he said some weird noise, which later on they told me it was his name. And um, he was one of my guides, and it was awesome, you know. And I thought, whoa, this is crazy! Like that was that was a ex new and exciting experience for me because here I've channeled tons of other beings, but I've never channeled aliens. So that was like, whoa, that was so cool. So then I talked to a friend of mine, and I said, okay, you're gonna you're gonna think I'm crazy, you're gonna think weird, but this is what happened to me. And she says, oh, no, not at all. There's this community called Hugolo. You need to meet Jim. You know, he's an expert in this. And why don't you get a reading from him? And I said, okay, cool. Now, with that experience, um, soon after my partner left, we separated and never spoke again. But the guide stayed. 
and he started communicating with me telepathically and a whole new thing started opening up because all of a sudden I started hearing languages understanding languages when I would watch a video I would all of a sudden I knew what part of the galaxy that entity was from what he was speaking what he was saying it was like whoa too much information see everything I do is always full-blown like the door is wide open for me and so I had to learn how to close it and it was just too much too soon too quick so when I talked to Jim I said look Jim you know this is cool and everything uh, aliens are pretty nice but uh, there's way too much information <laughs> you know is there a way I can turn this off because like it's really out there and um, and you know we went through different things and then sure enough everything shut down I went I was taken and I think a lot of it had to do with subconsciously I wanted to feel normal so bad that um, that I created a situation for myself where I took all my gifts away for about two months where I had none I took all my clairvoyance um, clairaudience everything that I was able to do it was shut down and uh, I made a contract apparently with my guides or my higher self that that was the, the time for me to, to be more earthbound and relate more to the 3D life and I have to say it was a very miserable experience to say the least because now I was like oh hell this is not me this is this is this must suck this really sucks being a human you know because I had like no no abilities anymore but I did that on purpose I think because I was so tired of and so overwhelmed of so much information and now here I got into a, another realm of reality uh, of the stars and of the aliens and understanding where now I kinda like everything got tied in and I met some amazing amazing people in this group which of course one of you is Roxy and um, and you guys without knowing have become that those mentors those guides you know that I didn't quite have before in human form in a way because I didn't have that person to go to and, and ask, hey, what is this? Is this really real? Am I going crazy? Or, you know, what am I, you know, constantly doubting myself where now I can pop in and, you know, check on one of the videos and boom, Osifius is talking about a topic that I was, you know, experiencing or something that I was questioning myself. And so you guys have become that foundation that I really, really needed to understand a lot of the things that I didn't have a clue before it was just experiences after experiences without really having the the right answers for what they were so Jim has been also a, a wonderful friend who um, allowed me to to participate you know in the group and uh, and I became friends with the entities I became friends with Takur I've gone up in the colonies and I've you know been around the hybrid kids and I've just now it's been now I feel like that depression that I horribly had before that was basically binding me and torturing me because it was it was just really painful um, it's not there anymore because now it's like I know that I belong here and I made the conscious choice to be here and I'm able to access home here there everywhere now and that's the whole um, understanding that I got from from going through this experience that even though we feel as if we miss being at home or that we don't belong here we truly do because we have access to all these realities all at, at the same time now here where we're at and so we really shouldn't hold on to that belief that we don't belong here because we truly do if you're here physically in this reality is because you do belong here and you are everywhere and you can connect to every every part of the universe from where you are right here right now and so that's my story and that's my journey into Hugalo and I hope that it helped anybody who perhaps is going through that experience of not knowing or not feeling that way well I can tell you this that's an epic freaking story <laughs> Epic. <laughs> I love how you put it together at the end because, you know, I get so many people, um, oh, how do you say it, that I don't belong here. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't belong here on earth. I'm, I'm in the wrong place. And you felt that and you wouldn't do that. And you actually felt what it is 
to be awake on Earth and then go to sleep on Earth and then wake up again on Earth. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so but that gave you the love of being here and being here now and knowing that you have access to everything else. And the other people that I get, a lot of people says, I don't belong here. And I say, yes, you do. You chose to be here, you know, and they have to change their perception. But that's their individual journey and your journey kicked ass to, to be awake and know it and then have to go to sleep so you can fit in mm -hmm. and then wake up again. And then it's like, holy cow. Yeah. yeah, I had to definitely <laughs> pretend, pretend most of my life to be, you know, uh, right. asleep because nobody was awake. So right. I came in in, a, in an era where everything was very much controlled by government and, and religion. I mean, you know, we came from Argentina running because uh, uh, World War II happened. All the Germans ran over there. They controlled the government right. and we were being right. tortured and all those things. So it was like really none of this was, you know, Spirituality wasn't even in the books, you know, at right. that time. So that's why I said when I came in, and all of a sudden I was like way out there. I could not relate. There was nobody to relate to. So, but it was but okay you found though. Us. Yeah, yeah, and it just you know, it's just a, a a fraction of a memory. It just it's in in and out. It's really I have no emotional attachment to it because I did a lot of healing about it and. And just the, the the most and what I want anybody and anybody who's listening to this to take away is is love to absolutely love life. You know, there's really nothing yes. that that there is here that is that it can take you away from the love of just the experience of you, who you are, and the people around you, Gaia, just the air you breathe. Everything here is love. So embrace it, enjoy it. It really, truly is your home. Oh, yes. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing, baby. You're welcome. So I think unless anyone else wants to share, anyone else want to share anything? Roxy, Marla, Kibbles, John, John from Down Under A. <laughs> Anybody? Bueller? Class? No? Not tonight. Okay. Very good. So... Um, that's all we have for now. We're not going to, let's say, linger on. That, that was today's edition of Storytime. So next week, same time, I'm going to be hosting again. I'm the, like the permanent host. And uh, we'll see if anyone, if anyone wants to sign up and, uh, let's say, go to Human Colonies. You know, I don't even know how to do that. Dan, are you there? Where do they go? On the calendar and put their name on the events list? Do you know? Uh, it would just be easier to talk to you on Google+. Yeah, Plus. yeah. just contact me on Google+. Plus. Yeah. Do it with Roxy and say, hey, Roxy, I've got a story. Or I'm, yeah. I'm also on uh, Skype, uh, Roxanne Swainhart. Search Roxanne Swainhart, uh, and you can find me on Skype. Swainhart is S-W-A-I-N-H-A-R-T. So that's it for story time this week. Thank you, guys, for all sharing. That's what I'd love to tell, or love to, uh, let's say, have happen is share the individual perspectives because, guys, the whole universe is subjective, okay? Everyone is going through their own thing, their own individual way of waking up and, and, and see that. It took me a long time to really get that, that I didn't have to look at that and compare it to my life. I didn't have to. You know, or they did it different, and I was missing something because it wasn't as my life sucked and their life was epic. No, it wasn't. I had to look at my life as being beautiful, and now I see everyone else's life as beautiful. So everyone's journey is important to them, which gives us perspectives of creation. And that's what I love about story time. That's really good shit. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Uh, next event is tomorrow. It's Guided Meditation by Johannes. No, uh, that was last week. My pardons. Sabrina's doing it this week, and um, it'll be uh, tomorrow at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Correct, Dan? Yeah, 6 p.m. Central. Central. Yeah, because I'm in Central time. And... Uh, I'm in Texas, Alexandria. Why did you leave Texas? I don't understand. <laughs> the weather sucks. <laughs> Come to Cali, baby. <laughs> What's up in Cali? Huh? What's out there in Cali? Thanks, John, for the ad. What's up nice. in Cali? 
It's all warm and love. Come on. <laughs> is it cold there? Because never. I don't like it cold. No, nope, really nope. never, never cold. Not at all. Okay, maybe I should come there because it's getting cold here. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's why right, I left. Silly. <laughs> all right, um, guys, I'm gonna take it off for live. Thank you all for tuning out there, out there in Booyah Land of YouTube. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you on the next now. And mwah, love eternal. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Love you.